Hey folks, it's Harry from Seller Daily Barbecue. Today we are going to feature Japanese style barbecue. We're going to be making a barbecue sauce with some Japanese ingredients. We've got a robota grill here and we've got some special bichotan charcoal. We're going to grill up some meats and show you guys how we do yakitori Japanese style. <music> What's up everyone, I'm Hideki and I am working on some yakitori, we're doing some R&D for our recipe. My friends and I had an idea one day to just make yakitori, we thought it would be really fun and we had a great time doing it, so we thought that maybe we should try and see if this can actually become something. Um, so I'm working with Brian Stu to uh, He's back work there. on our recipe. All right. <laughs> yeah, okay, hopefully it, 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 you'll, you'll see us soon on the streets. Okay, this is a chicken, chicken. Quarter or thai? thai. Quarter? Quarter. Yeah. yeah. Thai? So yeah, usually we use the quarter meat to get okay. some of the bones in there and we do some stuff with the bones too, but for today we're just using thai. Yeah. Butterfly like that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so yakitori chicken prep. Mm -hmm. This is the chicken leg quarter boneless and you're cutting against the grain into nice uh, one inch strips. Get ready for the skewer. Skewers have been uh, soaking in uh, water. All right, we're skewing the chicken. Kind of long, and, uh, so then I kind of sewing the chicken. So you into kind of sew it onto the bamboo skewer. Try to get any loose right. ends. Each one should be around like three, four inches. Yeah, right, like so. All right, so we're gonna skewer the chicken on uh, pre-soaked bamboo skewers. How about me eating the raw chicken? You want to eat a raw chicken, please, to be? Just eat like a skewer. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> this is my son Brian, uh, what do you call? He and uh, his buddy Hideki are gonna be perfecting these recipes so that they can open their right, yakitori restaurant soon. So this is the same like base tare that we've been using since we started. Um, we're definitely into reusing everything and kind of keeping the same base tare. Okay, tell everybody what the tare is. So tare is basically like a marinade that we continually baste the chicken in while we cook it. And this is something you, in traditional Japanese uh, yakitori, you, you reuse the tare, exactly. which is the sauce, right? Yeah, because yeah. you kind of keep that same you know, funk in there and you keep on growing off of it. It just has a lot of flavor that you can't okay. um, create overnight. So the, the ingredients to make, a, a kind of refresh it or to make more, yeah. is going to be soy sauce, sake, some brown sugar, and, the and some mirin inside. in there, right? Yeah. Wonderful. So most uh, yakitori restaurants, the, the tare is the top secret ingredient. I would say and so. uh, what, what is what is your what is your special formula? So we have one cup of good Kikoman soy sauce. Yes. One cup going in there. No, actually, so we do two. Two, actually two. Okay. And you grab more inside. Okay. So this is umakuchi. Um, it's kind of like a less salty soy sauce. Okay. Um, I think it kind of helps balance out for this recipe specifically. So two cups of good soy sauce. In this case, you cook Kikoman. It goes into the. Uh, you know, kind of the leftover batch of tare, yep. and then followed by how much sake? So we do two on one. Two on one, okay. And then the uh, sake, any particular brand? Uh, still experimenting with it, but okay. definitely a more filtered okay. one. So you want something that's clearer. Sake is a rice wine. Rice wine from Japan. Yes. Is it stronger than, than regular wine or? Uh, it's usually about the. Uh, actually, it's weaker. Weaker than regular. Okay, okay. No, I'm sorry. Okay. So I think rice wine will be around eight to eleven percent usually. Okay. And what we just just over one cup of sake, yes. two cups of soy sauce, and one cup of mirin, and one cup of mirin. And in particular, kind of mirin brand you use? I usually use Takara, but this is a uh, Mizukan. Mizukan. Mizukan, also pretty good. Yeah. So pretty simple formula: one cup sake, one cup mirin, which is Japanese rice wine vinegar, and two cups of soy sauce. Yeah. And then you warm it gently until the alcohol from the sake evaporates, right? Yeah. And you mix it with the leftover from the previous batch of the tare you used. And you let it simmer how long? Um, we keep an eye on it. You won't. You want to let it come to a soft boil. Otherwise, um, if it boils too hard, then the soy sauce will burn, and it'll start to get bitter. So we kind of keep an eye on it. Um, once it starts to burn off, then we just let it at a low simmer, so the bubble shouldn't be too big. This is the famous Japanese uh, bichotan, is it? Bichotan charcoal? Bichotan charcoal. And then you want to pick it up and knock it and see? So, yeah, so, so it makes a ringing noise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you break it up to pieces and you use it for the robota grill, right? Yeah. And this is a famous charcoal from Japan. Where did you buy this? Uh, Anzen Hardware in Little Tokyo. Little Tokyo in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. And 
you get nice chunks of charcoal. Yeah. And so this is super dense, uh, yeah. burns very, very high and very long. And hot. And hot. Hot, right, hot, hot charcoal. Yeah, and this is also what's in like Brita filters. It's oh, like it's, a, is all Brita filters? Yeah, they use, they use this Japanese high, charcoal? High quality, usually compressed charcoal. Okay, so this is the special grill for Japanese yakitori. Yeah. And this is a color Robota. I don't know. What are the characteristics of Robota? It's made of ceramic, is it? Ceramic? Made of ceramic or clay, usually something that can endure high heat, mm -hmm. um, has vents on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so you, the, the goal is to keep on fanning it. So oh, you want to show them the fan? Yeah. Where's the fan? And so you want to fan it basically, oh, okay. lightly fanning it throughout mm -hmm. the whole duration, helps this is, keep the charcoal. This is a legit Japanese fan <laughs> yeah. with the lady on it, right? Yeah. Okay, very cool. <laughs> yeah. And so you just want to make sure like too, not too much ash forms okay. on the coal, so that's why you're gently... Yeah. And then we, we heat up it. the charcoal using yeah, a chimney. Weber charcoal chimney, yeah. like so. And it takes a little, little while, but you want to gently... Heat the charcoal until you cook, you heat the charcoal until it's all ash white. Or how does it work? Yeah, all ash white, and then after that, it's good to go. This uh, is uh, uniquely Japanese, right? Yes. Yeah. This is uh, a, yeah. and then the yaki yaki means grill. Grill. Yeah. Tori is chicken. Bird. Chicken. Bird. Yeah. 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 And if you grill meats, it's called yaki. Niku. Yaki niku. Yes. Okay, yaki niku. And then what other meats are typically done on this uh, robota grill? Uh, so, all parts of the chicken. Mm -hmm. And then um, some places will also do beef, it depends, but traditionally it's mainly usually just chicken and then like people, places that are branching out doing like beef tongue, you know, lamb chops, people get them at choice sometimes. I always still notice they also do, uh, is it ginkgo, ginkgo seeds? The nuts? The nuts, yeah, they do nuts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can grow pretty much anything, you know, which is really awesome and it just gives us great flavor. Um, one of the items that we are messing around with is enoki mushrooms that we wrap in a shiso leaf uh -huh. and you kind of grill it up like that and uh, so when it finishes off the shiso leaf is nice and crunchy um, and it, but it still has the flavor of it and the flavor cooks into the enoki mushrooms a little bit so it's pretty good <laughs> wow so this is fantastic you can pretty much do anything you want on yeah. a robota grill uh, with some uh, bichotan charcoal it's all good so we're prepping shiitake mushrooms the simple x on the top just like that so we'll skewer them um, and we'll kind of baste them with a little bit of oil as we cook them so that they don't dry out from the high heat. So the main stuff about Japanese barbecue is that you want to make sure, I mean pretty much what makes it is the binchotan charcoal, which is that nice high quality, high burning charcoal. Um, the way that it cooks, it adds a very clean smokiness. Like you can literally cook directly on that charcoal and eat anything that comes off of it because the it just burns so cleanly and the ash adds actually a nice smokiness. It's cheap food, it's a great way to keep warm and yeah. eat. And uh, Japanese people love to eat and drink, so this is kind of the thing, you know, that you can eat and drink at the same time. So right now, the tare is kind of at a low boil, as you can see, and this is to kind of burn off the alcohol that we put in there. Uh, if you keep it too much in there and you don't burn it off, it has a very strong flavor. Uh, but we like the acidity from it, and it's a nice way to add acid and sugar to the composition without having to do too much. So we're just burning that off. One of the main reasons why we like to reuse the tare too is because there's just, you know, when you continue to add on to the base flavor, it kind of almost shows the years that you've put into this craft or, you know, being able to feed people and provide people with this. So um, it's a tradition. It's a way of kind of continuing on. And it's it's a way of showing, like, you know, that we really put time into this. It's not something you can replicate that years of flavor that you continue to add on to it. This is very similar to the starter dough. When you make, like, sourdough in San Francisco, the starter dough is something that is used for decades or generations yeah, of bakers. Exactly. So in the Japanese cuisine, the tare is a very special condiment it's a special sauce that is uh, sanitized and reused and replenished uh, before each cook many restaurants in japan pride themselves with their secret recipe for the tari exactly so what we do to prevent cross-contamination is every time we finish uh we reboil everything to make sure we cook anything that's uncooked in there and we strain everything out in terms of all the particles of like meat or anything else that kind of falls in there that way we keep it clean every time and this tradition of you using tari goes back how far? What's the history of the tari? Uh, well, so we just started probably about a month and a half ago. So uh, we've done four sessions of R&D and then we've also done a few dinner parties for friends, just testing out stuff. Um, so yeah, we've done it four times, but we're continuing to add into that base and we hope it'll keep adding for another 10 years, 15 years. So uh, you try to light the, yaki, the remaining sake? Yeah. So if it doesn't light, it means that the alcohol is burned off, so that's good, right? So you want to yeah. make sure that you test it. So this is a technique for testing the... Alcohol, if the alcohol, there's no more alcohol burn. I'm sorry, if there's, if there's no more alcohol, it won't burn. So this is good, right? Exactly. Now that the uh, sake is burned off, Hideki's gonna add about one cup of brown sugar, golden brown sugar. Yeah. So, add to the tare. 
slightly simmer. And you do this only after the alcohol is burned off. Yeah. So it's basically mirin, soy sauce, sake, burn off everything, and then add your sugar. Exactly. Now you dip with chicken before or during or after or both? Constant. So we use the bain marie here. That way you can kind of just dip the whole thing in. It's oh, just a quicker okay, so, okay. process to dunk it yeah. straight in there. Okay. Um, and then we have a finishing sauce that we'll brush over the top to finish it off. That's wow. why no cross contamination okay, still Okay. So you have another sauce that you cook already, right? Yeah. To finish it off with. So this will this will grill a long time, right? So you really don't need a lot of charcoal. Yeah. Um, this will probably last a solid tonight. Just this batch here. Is a bichetan charcoal expensive? Six dollars a pound for. Air. A six dollar a pound. A pound. Wow, that's, yeah, that's, that's not cheap. So there was there's like how much? There's how many pounds there? Three pounds. Uh, in the box total, we have five. So five pounds. This and everything wow, so thirty bucks for the charcoal. So it's not it's not really expensive charcoal, right? Yeah. But this is made in Japan through a very special process, right? They have to really spend a lot of time to make charcoal, and I know craftsmen in Japan who do nothing in life except make this charcoal, right? Yeah. They, they spend their entire lifetime dedicated to this art form of making the charcoal. Yes. It's really hard charcoal. Because they also use this charcoal to like keep their houses. Um, you know, so it's multi-purpose. It's not just used for cooking. As a rite of passage, you should you have to hold the charcoal in your hand for ten seconds. Yes. As a rite of passage. Rite of passage okay. So that you can uh, become a good yakitori master. So we got the charcoal ready, right? Heating up. Yeah. We got the tare, which is the sauce we made, and then we've got the uh, skewered vegetables, and we got the skewered yakitori. Now you do not use the grate, right? You're not using grate. Yeah. Traditionally, no, right? So, so some, some of the vegetables, like sometimes we do kabocha pumpkin, mm -hmm. and that's really hard to skewer, so we'll do that on the grate, just because it has a great flavor to it. It's a nice winter veggie. Hideki, um, your, your name is Japanese, right? So uh, tell, tell a little bit about your, your, your name and your background, so we, the people know this is a legit video. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get a hater, hater comments by saying, hey, Harry, you're, you're, you are not a, a Japanese. Why are you showing people how to cook yakitori? Right, but I have a real Japanese Hideki. It's yeah. real Japanese, so <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, legit. I mean, people have yeah, a lot of haters on YouTube. Yeah, you know, they say how dare how dare you cook my my barbecue? You're not Japanese, so you have no right to tell me how to cook yakitori. Yeah, uh, yeah. My name is Hideki, uh, second generation Japanese. My dad immigrated here from Japan, from Nara, Osaka. Yeah, I love to cook. Gang, see, gang. gang. So, yeah, so, so, no, 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 so, 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 haters, no haters out there. Okay, so, no Hideki haters. is real Japanese. <laughs> I'm learning from him, so he's teaching me how to cook yakitori, so please do not send me any nasty comments, all right? It's not Harry Sue here cooking. Don't send Harry Sue any nasty comments. That's right. Go talk to Hideki. Okay. Okay, so outside reel is how much? 223, 216. Okay, okay and then run the middle, middle reel. Okay, right, running right in the middle here. What is, what is it right? Stop, stop, stop right there. What did you say? 550. See, oh, I was right. About 600 degrees. So yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So you dip in the tare. Be on. Curry, put it on between 500 to 600 degrees on the bitter chan charcoal. You know, I used to eat this in uh, Japan, right? And then uh, you, would, you would sit in the cold in the Japanese winter. Yep. And you sit in the yakitori stall and outdoors. It's like a, like a little cart. Exactly. In Osaka, Osaka. And then we would sit there and it's sometimes raining and we, we, we see the smoke coming up. You have a nice cup of tea. You yeah. would be eating yakitori, drinking beer. That, that's life. <laughs> okay, look at that beautiful yakitori chicken fanning action left to right. Left to right is better than right? top to the bottom, right? Yeah, so it seems it gets the heat more evenly. Look at that, look at good. this. Looking good. Brushing it with a little bit of finishing oil, which is a little bit of sesame oil. So, add a little bit of finishing salt. Alright, a little bit of finishing salt. Okay, here's a completed yakitori. Looks super good. Just came hot off the grill. All right, so everybody do a taste test. Make sure you guys doing a taste test. Okay, Brian, you go first. Mmm, -hmm. good. Oh, <laughs> your camera, you do a taste test here. What do you think? Good flavor. Mm -hmm. Salty and salties. The tare is really good, right? Grill, grill is perfect. Mm -hmm. Wow, super moist. All right, there you have it. Yakitori. Courtesy of Hideki and my son Brian, we cooked uh, about 15 minutes, right? 15 minutes total. Yeah. All right. So absolutely great flavor. So this is how you do Japanese grill on the robota, using some bichujan charcoal, making the tare sauce to go with it. 
So I hope you like this video. Uh, this is a real authentic Japanese yakitori video done by Hideki, who is Japanese. <laughs> so he's gonna basically see if we can get this restaurant concept going. So until next time, we'll catch you in the next episode. So please like, subscribe, and share, and tell your friends that Harry also does yakitori Japanese yakiniku barbecue.